Hello, happy Monday, and welcome to another edition of the still unnamed travel show. No chit chat this morning. Let's get straight into it. Budget airline Ryanair, an airline that I've never actually personally flown myself, but would love to try based on some of the amazing things I've read about them online, have asked airports that they operate out of to start imposing a two drink per passenger limit per boarding pass and to ask airports to completely ban alcohol sales before 10 a.m. Drunk passengers have been boarding airlines pretty much since planes have been flying. It's nothing new. Robert Bahalis, who was a passenger flying between Latvia and Manchester a little while ago, was convicted of exactly that after he indecently assaulted one of his fellow passengers and did the same to a member of the cabin crew. Now, he was convicted to eight months in prison, but he's not alone because in the UK alone in 2016, there were 387 people taken into custody as a result of drunk and disorderly behavior on an aircraft. That's more than one a day. Now, I think honestly what Ryanair are doing here is actually a good thing, but I'm not sure that they're going to get it across the line because they're asking the airports themselves to stop selling alcohol or at least reduce the amount of alcohol they sell to passengers to stop a revenue stream, which is obviously pretty big to them. I'm not sure if that's something that's going to fly. <laughs> fly. I didn't mean it just came. Now, I think, and this is just my opinion, I don't think the responsibility should be on the airports themselves. I think it should be on the passengers. So I'm wondering, and this may be controversial, but let me know what you think in the comments. Should airlines be allowed to breathalyze passengers before they get on board the aircraft? I know that if I was operating an aircraft myself and I had a passenger who I thought potentially may be intoxicated and therefore may be a danger to my staff or passengers, I'd want the ability to breathalyze them. And just like with driving, if they're over a certain limit, I don't want them on the plane. I realize this is just supposed to be like a news and facts segment and I shouldn't bring my opinion into it, but let me know what you think as well. Let's bring our opinions into it. Mileage Plus members, if you're looking to earn some extra bonus points, this is a good way to do it through Hertz Car Rental. The offer that United Airlines have with Hertz to earn points has been extended. There's a bonus 1,500 mileage plus miles now still available through until the end of September. As well as the points that you already get with Hertz Car Rentals and United based on your status tier, this is regardless of your tier. It's 1,500 points irrespective of your status for booking a mid or a large size car for two days or more between now and the end of September. Car hire is actually a really good way to earn extra points, but my tip for you is have a look on the airline site to see which car hire companies they partner with, but then jump on that car hire website itself and see if you can actually get a cheaper rate by booking direct, because quite often all you need to do is put in your frequent flyer number in your booking, and then your points will still be accrued back to your frequent flyer account anyway. My travel tech tip of the week actually involves an app. If like me, you spend your evenings on the couch whilst your wife is watching Love Island, flicking through your phone, seeing where you can book a holiday to, hopefully leaving that night. Now you may already be familiar with Skyscanner. I mean, a lot of people use their website for booking. You may already have the Skyscanner app as well, but I wanna show you something in the app which is a really useful feature, and that's their fare alert system. When you go to the app, click on search, put in your origin, put in your destination, say we wanna do a return to London here, put in your dates across the top. Then you wanna choose obviously your cabin class, so let's say business, number of passengers, let's go for two. And then what I recommend is go across to the right-hand side here and click on filter and put in your filters at this point. Now you might wanna travel with a specific airline like Qantas or Singapore or whoever it is, for example. You may also wanna go via certain airports or you may only want a certain number of stops or you may just not care, but put in your filters at this point, click on apply, your results come back. But the cool thing that I wanna show you here is if you click on the bell icon down here in the bottom left, you can set up a fare alert, which will alert you through push notifications on your phone when those fares change. Make sure you've got that switch saying, switch all my search filters on, click on create. Now you will need an account with Skyscanner for this to work, but quickly register an account and then you'll get push notifications when those fares change. Useful if you know where you wanna be traveling and when you wanna be traveling as well. And you've got a bit of time between now and when you need to make the decision to book that ticket. Set up the fare alert and at least this way, if there's like a 48 hour sale or something going on that you you don't know about and the fare does drop, at least you're not going to miss out. Singapore, the home of the best dumplings I've ever had when traveling, which actually reminds me I need to get into Asia a bit more, is now going to be getting extra flights operating to and from Sydney on Mondays, Fridays and Sundays. The new flight is going to be QF84 departing Singapore at 10 p.m. and then the other leg will be QF83 from Sydney to Singapore at 3.30 p.m. The flight's going to be operated on an A330-300 that gives you the one-to-one -one configuration in business and an economy cabin, but no premium economy. It's great, Qantas, are putting on these flights. Singapore is a great destination if you've never been if you're living in Sydney or if you're watching this in Singapore, then hey, come to Australia. But my only concern is whether it's going to place additional load on the Qantas lounge in Singapore, which is a great lounge, but it sometimes does operate at or at least close to capacity from what I've seen. 
But either way, we'll see how it goes and it's good to get more flights operating between those two destinations. The flights with Qantas will be starting from December. And finally, yes, it's everyone's favorite segment. It is, what is the best credit card you can have this week to earn the most frequent flyer points? I had a comment in a previous video that the last couple of credit cards have all been very Australian centric. So this is one for everyone who's watching from the US and in particular, anyone who wants to earn Avio Avios. Avios or Avios? This British Airways card is issued by Chase Bank in the US, which does mean you need a US residential address, but it's only $95 annual fee per year. To get your bonus points, if you spend $3,000 or more in the first three months, you get 50,000 bonus points. Then if you spend $10,000 in the first year, you'll get an additional 25,000 bonus points on top of that. And if if you actually end up spending 20,000 in the first year, you'll get an additional 25,000 points. Now I'm just gonna rein it back a second there because I actually think that's quite a lot of spending to commit to to get 100,000 points. However, look at the card in this way. This is a good, relatively cheap way to get 50,000 Avios points. All you need to do is spend that $3,000 in the first three months. And to be honest, if you've got an existing credit card that's not earning points, chop that up, use this one, and you're probably gonna be able to put $3,000 on it of money that you already would have spent. And if you're wondering what to do with those 50,000 points, then head on to avios.com. There's actually a pretty cool tool on their website where you can put in how many points you have, you can put in the continent that you want to visit, and it will list out the countries on a map that you'll be able to go to based on the number of points that you have. Okay, that's it for this week. Land on the like button if you enjoyed that. Am I going to keep that pun? I don't know. If you're enjoying this content and you haven't already, then click on that subscribe button, guys. It really helps me to grow the channel and to try and bring more content like this to you. Otherwise, thank you as always for watching. Travel safe, and I'll catch you again next week on the still unnamed travel show.